just moving uh, around. Might have a short or something, but when you're speaking, it's fine. Okay. Well, we are on air right now, so welcome everybody to another Education on Air conference organized by Google Certified Teachers to share a space and another professional experience. Thank you all attendees, that is Teresa, Clarita, Vance for being here with me. Vance from Abu Dhabi, can say hi, and Teresa from Portugal, I hope you say hi as well from this one. And Teresa, you're going to help me with uh, moderating this um, space. And um, well, I'm Rita Sainstech from Argentina, and I'm going to speak about um, transforming and tailoring your um, Twitter and uh, think about Twitter as a professional development tool. And I'm going to add some uh, tools to enhance and complement the value of Twitter. So, once, um, again, thanks a lot for being here as well as Teresa and Clarita, and I would like you once to explain a little bit about what we're going to do in, in the sense of, you know, um, multitasking with different tools. Okay. Um, I might, uh, can everybody hear? Can, are you listening to us, Claire? And yes. Teresa, okay. And Claire, is Claire listening? She's removed her headset. Yeah. Static is coming from her microphone. Um, anyway, um, so, well, basically, uh, uh, <laughs> Rita said she she announced on WebHeads in action, or, you know, our WebHeads list, that she was, or maybe it was in uh, Google, I think it's Google Plus, that she was going to be broadcasting at a time convenient for me. So I offered to stream what she's doing in a way that we normally uh, do this on uh, Learning Together events. In fact, our learning together, we're, we're sort of co-opting this event for learning together. So uh, uh, w the way we do it, when we do a hangout, uh, if you get more than 10 people in the hangout, it gets full. And then the 11th person to come along, it says, sorry, you can't enter. And it doesn't really give a reason. Well, it just says the hangout is full, that there is no recourse. So what we've done is we've set up a recourse. And the, the recourse is that you can go to webheadsinaction.org slash live. And you can uh, find there that the the Hangout is being streamed as it's happening, as it's recording in YouTube. It, uh, YouTube happens to be streaming it. So we pick up the stream and we put it in webheadsinaction.org slash live. I learned this trick from Jeff Lebeau, who uh, pioneered it. He's been teaching people webcasting for some time. He taught me how to do this in probably about 15 or 20 minutes. It turns out it's pretty simple. So uh, anyway, uh, we've also got a, an Etherpad text chat there. so that people can go there and just listen to the stream if they want. Uh, they can join us in the text chat. Let's see if anybody is there. It looks like nobody has joined us at the text chat at the moment, except for me. I'm there. Um, but anyway, we'll monitor. If you're listening in the stream, you can uh, communicate with us in the text chat. Uh, I put the direct links to the URLs in that text chat and also at webheadsinaction.org slash live and also at learningtogether.pbworks.com, which is another place that uh, you can access this event. So basically, that's it. The rest of it is Rita's. She's the one who called it, set it up, and uh, came up with the expertise to share with us. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Vance, but um, you still need to say where you are from. Oh, <laughs> thought you guys knew who I was. I'm yeah. Dan Stevens. But many, many people will be uh, watching us, I guess, uh, through mm -hmm. the video. You never know, and uh, listening to the podcast as it, as it happens. So, yeah, I'm Vance Stevens. I'm living in Abu Dhabi right now, and uh, all of us here are active in Webheads in Action, which which is a community of practice that's been going on for the, since nineteen well, since two thousand and two for the professional part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you, Vance and Teresa. Ice tea. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Teresa, please, can you say hi? Or maybe Teresa has lost sound. Are you there, Teddy? And Clarita, I think uh, she's got a problem with her mic. She said so, so maybe I should be, um, yes, uh, no mic, um, 
Clarita and Teresa maybe is going is having some problems. Um, no, we can't hear you, Teresa. But as soon as you speak, maybe maybe you are. No. no. Oh, there. Oh yeah, there you are. Maybe you that's can hear me now. Mic. Yes, please. Yeah. Maybe it's my mic. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm Teresa Almeida Dessa, and I live in the Greater Lisbon area, Portugal. I'm also uh, an active uh, webhead, a veteran webhead, uh, since 2002, and. Um, here we are to listen to Rita talk to us about Twitter and other tools. Well, thank you very much, Teresa. Yes, um, we're going to talk about um, Twitter. I hope that you can see the presentation which I am sharing now, right now with you. Um, this is uh, Twitter. I guess that most of you know, or all of you know what Twitter is, and you are big Twitterers. Gladi, I know that you are. Once I see you on Twitter sometimes, and Teresa, not that much. But Clarita is a fan, aren't you, Clarita? Well, I'm so sorry she can't answer, but I'm, I'm sure um, she is. So what is microblogging? Let's go into that. But it's the exponent of a snack culture. And I would say that snack culture is the current need of consumers to crave for instant gratification applied to internet users who want online content in a short interactive form. And microblogging caters for the needs of this snack culture which privileges text brevity, users' mobility and virtual networks as social environments. In fact, we all, we all know that it answers one question which is what's happening. And uh, sometimes um, we think that it might be asking um, what's uh, going on and what's on your head, but I guess that what's happening is the best option for us to bear in mind that uh, it has to do with our interests more than with what we are right, I mean, strictly doing at the moment we are writing. And um, sorry if you want to interrupt me to say something, you are very welcome, please, because this is supposed to be a shared presentation, a shared exchange of ideas, right? Yeah, we might ask Neri to introduce herself. She just joined us. I don't know. Is your mic on, Neri? Oh, you, you have to unmute your mic when you're just joining the chat. That's one that's not necessarily uh, clear. So you have to unmute your mic. It's muted by default when you enter the chat. <laughs> At the top, above above uh, the group chat, you have a mic icon, and that's you can the click right on that corner. icon. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of icons. Uh, the first one is your mic icon. Yes. At the top of the hangout window. On your right, <laughs> at the top. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Over there. Oh. <laughs> no, it might be over there on because this is mirrored. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you want to say okay. something, you're very welcome to write it. Okay, she's uh, okay. She, anyway, she's signed to us, so it's nice to see you there. <laughs> and nice to see you here and welcome. Thank you for being here. So, um, okay, so just stay. It's nice to, to see you here, Mary. Um, okay, so um, we were doing the screen share. That is um, talking about microblogging pluses because we know that it imposes the necessity to abbreviate fitting in ideas which develop skills for word selection. And this is why I, I really feel that microblogging is very good for um, classroom use because uh, imposing the necessity to abbreviate uh, makes it um, a good tool to develop, um, you know, uh, this idea of brevity and precision in what uh, students want to say. and. Uh, the necessity to say in a few words what they have in mind and choose the right words, right? 
So it fulfills the need of being fast and uh, also getting instant feedback and more connections. And uh, in this way, uh, it shapes our own community, which I find wonderful because it has nothing to do with Facebook. And I'm sorry, Vance, I know that you are a fan of Facebook or at least uh, more fun than I am. I, I'm, I don't like Facebook at all. Uh, because you you never know who will come in and uh, who will be reading what you write on Facebook, but in this case you just uh, build up your own community and you are sure and safe within your community, right? Um, so this is what I really appreciate about um, uh, Twitter, for example. Yes, you're going like to say something, Vance. I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their own affordances. Twitter gives you short bursts of information. Uh, Twitter is kind of like a stock ticker in a way. And Facebook is a little bit more, has a, a greater mix. Uh, most people use it for their friends, so at least for me it starts off that way. And then as my professional colleagues become more and more my friends, then it starts feeding me professional information as well. Right, but I feel that Facebook is more like, you know, gossiping and uh, or maybe social thing if you want to be more positive. That depends on your network, you know. Uh, so uh, I guess each person would cultivate different networks at different places. For me, I uh, my Twitter network is pretty much prof all professional. It's where I sort of started it. That I don't have too many friends tweeting me, but um, my friends are normally on Facebook. So I guess for me... That's that way, but I suppose I, I mean I see a lot of people's tweets look very social, so I'm, I'm sure a lot of people communicate with their friends on Twitter more than I do. Oh yeah, but the thing is that you can follow, you can choose who to follow, you can choose who to become a mm. member of your own community, which is not exactly the case uh, in Facebook, yes. right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, in, in Twitter, of course, you can you can follow uh, Noam Chomsky, you can follow Barack Obama, you can follow anybody. They don't have to be your friend. They don't have to give you permission. You just uh, exactly. follow them. Exactly. Um, uh, some people do uh, want you to want to give you permission, and those people just cut off the conversation. When I see that, I just never mind. <laughs> don't even bother. But uh, <laughs> you know, normally, the idea is that you leave it open. That. Uh, you know, so so anybody can follow anybody. You can learn from them according to what they tweet. Yeah, yeah, uh, I love and, that. Uh, and Neri points out that she's uh, uh, created a Facebook page to uh, uh, create a group with her Hungarian students. It worked perfectly to establish rapport and as a way to establish to express themselves since they were pretty shy in classroom setting. So yeah. That's, I, I suppose, Twitter, you're probably going to tell us how Twitter can be used to something like the same effect. Um, Neri, well, um, if you want to explain something about what you do with Twitter or Facebook, you're very welcome. So maybe, uh, well, you can put it up there, uh, whatever it is that you want to share on the, in the chat window, and uh, Tere or Vance will come up with... Uh, what you have written. Anyway, so going back to the pluses, so microblogging pluses, I need to add, to add that the use of tags to me is very, very important. In fact, um, it uh, gives you the possibility of, uh, well, coming to or getting to know people with uh, your same interests. So this is another possibility, another way of uh, following people without following them, right? And you can help, uh, you can be helped to share real-time data, uh, which is another big, big plus since many, many pieces of news uh, get across more readily from Twitter than from the, you know, the, the media. <coughs> So we can say that microblogging is used to ask for and provide help, to share ideas, to get advice, to make recommendations, to announce events. And um, do you know any other examples of microblogging in advance of the people who are watching or who are with me? Any other examples apart from Twitter? Uh, Plurk? Yeah, Plurk. Have you used it? Twitter. Well, I it used to yes, it, I I started using it. I was a user when I when it came out. I didn't like it as much as I like Twitter. But it, people say it's more social and it 
it, it, it's more engaging for conversations. There are threads you can follow. Uh, but it, it became uh, popular when Twitter was had first started and it was giving us a lot of whales, floating whales. But now Twitter seems more stable. Yeah. And there's Michael Coughlin. Hey, Michael. Hello. Hello, Michael. Welcome. How are you doing? Oh, hello, yep. How are you doing? I'm going to be seeing Michael in, in a few days in Australia. Right. I can imagine. Yeah, uh -huh. Less than a week. Yeah, we're going to do a, a podcast Lucky from you. there. Lucky we're you just can't announcing it. Well, you see, reliable web heads always present again. <laughs> well, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. This is one of my biggest prides. I mean, being a web head is uh, just that. I mean, it's just the best thing that they have, can have happened in your life. So, uh, apart from Plurk, you know that Edmodo yeah. was said to be at the very Doorbell. beginning. Edmodo was said to be... Um, uh, a microblogging tool, but it's no longer said to be that because you know that at Modo it's different. It's a platform, really. So, well, this Twitter thing has gone far enough, really. <laughs> now Twitter is um, practically one of the most famous social platforms we all know of, and we need to explain for maybe for people who are going to watch the the video what Twitter is, in case they have just heard about it. Well, according to Wikipedia, it's a free social networking and microblogging service that allows users to send updates. And according to Van Stevens, who was present today, it's the most popular of the genre of microblogging tools that emulate SMS messaging, but fall short of blogging. I like that very much, Van. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, according to Douglas McIntyre in Time, uh, it's one of the largest platforms in the world for sharing real-time data. Now, this is the way it looks, and I guess that everybody will um, recognize this. And we need to highlight that, uh, well, you have there at the top on your left uh, the number of tweets that you have posted, uh, people um, who follow you and people you follow, and suggestions who to follow in case you, well, would like to go on following people. To me, uh, the best thing to do is just to follow not so many people. I've seen people who can follow thousands of other people, and I guess, well, how much they can be reading uh, every single day, you know, following so many thousands of people. I, 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 I can't do that. So I just stick to a small number of um people who I follow, and uh, the best thing maybe is to uh, put up posts which will attract people who will be following you. That is uh, the way of uh, building up your own community as well. And then you have the possibility of um, sending direct messages or belonging to different lists, and something which you have on your, uh, here on your screen at the top on your right. And then uh, Below each message, uh, you will find, uh, if you just hover over the message, you will find view summary, reply, retweet, favorite, and more. You can email the tweet or can embed the tweet. So you have several possibilities. Now, these are the icons, which stand for reply, retweet, and favorite, and the classical at to reply directly from a single individual post. And why the interest? Well, because of its relevance. We all know that Twitter is a very well-known, famous tool all over the world by now, and uh, where we, we should uh, be part of it. Because of its quickness, it's really fast. It gets through instantaneously, I mean, immediately. Because of its, it, its distinct style, which is not exactly the style that we find in Facebook, sorry, Vance, but I would say that um, <laughs> sometimes in Facebook, words are distorted, and in, in uh, Twitter, they're not. Um, maybe they are shortened, but they are not distorted. And it's a very conversational way of uh, keeping a, con I mean, a, a chat going, so students, if they're can gain a lot of insight as, I mean, oh, um, 
how to use words in context in different ways. And we can tweet to follow conversations and follow others and participate in a community, collaborate in Twitterature. Do you know what Twitterature is? Do you happen to know? Twitterature? No. Um, no. Uh, it's a very good site for uh, teachers or students if they are interested in literature, but it's been made, that is, literature made into tweets, very short tweets, uh, mm. maybe too much simplified for some uh, people, and I would agree with them in the sense that it's no longer literature, but it's, may, it's the way of maybe um, uh, putting literature near or allowing students to read um, literature um, in a more sim in a simpler style. So it's a good thing. Would be a good thing to uh, take a look and see whether it f you know uh, meets our, our our interests. If we're interested in uh, taking students to well join this site. Then we can also allow our students to correct tweets and to integrate note passing into a lesson. Uh, I think that by now kids as well are into this. Uh, I would say that some years ago Twitter was only limited to adults as it said that uh, Twitter caters for the needs of adults more than Facebook and I agree with that. And as a classroom tool, well, it has many, many advantages because it offers opportunities to practice specific language skills. Students can learn how to focus on what they say better, so they can, uh, they should be able to limit uh, and concentrate on the main idea. Um, conversations continue inside and outside the classrooms, and uh, it's a good way of. Uh, building up a community, which I would say would be still more profitable if we invited um, more people from outside the classroom. Uh, it allows students to get a sense of the world. Uh, maybe if we allow parents to join in, they will understand how Twitter works and how it enhances the value of uh, well, learning the language and practicing it. Uh, they, it can be used to track a word and see how the word behaves in context, in different contexts. Uh, we can track a conference uh, at the same time, or we can just participate in a conference, uh, even if we are away from the conference, by following the people who tweet at the same time as I mean, when the conference is being given. Uh, we can get, get instant feedback on anything we want and follow a professional or a famous person. In this sense, I would say that this is another way of um, using a tool in the classroom just by allowing our students to follow a professional or a famous person and then reporting what they have found according to the tweets that the person has made and the students have uh, read. And it can be also used as a storytelling tool, maybe in the classroom allowing uh, students to write a tweet and go on with uh, the story um, in well together, right? As a class. Now, Rita, yes, can yes, I, Rita, can I interrupt? Of course, you're welcome. Okay. Well, first of all, regarding the previous slide or two slides behind, yeah. uh, Michael commented, wow, Rita, do you correct students' tweets? So are there people correcting students' tweets? Well, um, I wouldn't correct the students' tweet online. I wouldn't just make, make it public. Maybe the comments I would make would be in class. Uh, and maybe I wouldn't even uh, name the student who has made a mistake. But I would mm -hmm. only do that if the mistake impaired uh, communication. If it is just a very, um, well, uh, a silly mistake or a typo or let's say, for example, an S in the third person singular, I wouldn't take that into account, even though uh -huh. Argentinian teachers are very, very strict about grammar. But yes. I, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Michael, would you?
does my uh, yeah yeah I look um I hadn't even thought of it Rita so no I haven't and I'm not saying I wouldn't I've just it's the first time I've ever heard anyone say that you could use Twitter like that and it seems reasonable but the way you explain it also sounds fine just you're not doing it real time in full public view of the rest of the Twitter community so maybe it's quite a valid strategy uh -huh, thank you very much and Vance what would you say at this? Vance or Tere? Um, yeah, well, oh, you, oh, oh, okay go ahead Terry Oh, thank you. Uh, I was just going to say regarding uh, your uses, uh, the, the list of uses of Twitter, uh, I also remember uh, a year and a half ago or two uh, watching this video of a classroom, I think he was, uh, it was like a social studies classroom, and um, you know they were discussing a certain topic and uh, then the teacher would ask questions and they would all answer in Twitter and so they would have at the end of the lesson, they would have lots of um, ideas, you know, about uh, answers to certain uh, questions uh, in the topic, in the top, in the discussion of the topic. So that's also another possibility. Yeah, great. But uh, then again, then again, it has its um, uh, disadvantages, uh, in to the extent that some teachers just will not allow. Uh, smartphones, cell phones, etc. Yeah. in class, and this was basically done through uh, cell phones. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are still in the process of change, Tere, because I do believe mm -hmm. that uh, smartphones and uh, cell phones can be integrated into the classroom, provided we think of the real, I mean, the, the activity that will suit our needs, but uh, why shouldn't we, you know, integrate these tools, these tools which we are using all day long? Everybody is mm -hmm. using a cell phone right now. Right. So, um, thank you, Tere. Any, anything else that you would like to ask? Or, Neri, um, is Neri still there, Tere? Yes. Right. Maybe she has something to add or ask. But her mic isn't working, so only in the text chat yeah, area. Yeah, only the text I think. chat. Okay, mm -hmm. just please do interrupt me because uh, I'm just following what I'm saying, and uh, um, I'm not that good at multitasking. So you are my my eyes at this moment, right, Edith? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> so going back to hashtags, you know what a hashtag is? It's, it's a tag that we use to. Um, do a search, and I would say that in Twitter, a uh, uh, hashtag is the, the most powerful search engine because it connects with real-time information. And um, uh, for example, if you said something, um, um, if you said something insightful or, or, or answered a question, others may respond and engage you in conversation by using the hashtag that you have used. Conversely, if you are following a certain hashtag, you can tweet a question to others who are observing that conversation stream and engage other interested users in real time or find people you follow or you want to follow. And um, so, for example, if you are interested in knowing about an actor or knowing about a musician or a topic or if you are interested in building relationships or finding people like you or sharing content, whatever, then you can use a hashtag. In fact, there are very um, hash several hashtags which are very popular. Uh, these are some of the hashtags which are preceded by this symbol, the one that you, uh, the, I think it's a numeral, right? Should you call it like that, numeral? The hashtag? Um, well, these are some of the very well-known hashtags which are popular. And uh, in fact, these are some others which are connected strictly with teaching and learning. EdTech, anything to do with technology in the classroom. Uh, then you have a, a education in, with ed, uh, that is connected with education in general. E-learning, more connected with uh, you know um, technology. And uh, hashtag teachers, focusing on the teacher or discussions 
that is, etc. You have different options, and depending on what you're interested in, you can just um, use the hashtag to look for people who are uh, within that circle, within that community, let's say, and if you find that community interesting, then you can join the community very easily and start getting the postings or the tweets from the members of this community. So this is a very, very good way of enlarging your community and at the same time of learning a lot from members who, who really have your same interests. Now, I have also added uh, some Rita, other... Yes, yes. Please, please uh, Neri, ha Neri has a question. Yes. Would you use Twitter for a particular English level? Oh, of course, as with uh, most uh, tools, um, the more advanced your students are, the, the, the more uh, knowledge of the language they have, well, the easier it is for you to use a platform like Twitter because they will be able to use the language more readily than uh, students who have only got two or three years of English. But you can adapt that. Uh, and if you can just make a kind of very short community for your beginners, maybe that will help as well, provided you have people who are the same level within your community, I guess there won't be any any problems. This is my personal feeling. What do you think, uh, Tere? Rita, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention. I was looking up how you say that uh, hashtag thing. Uh, and no that problem. you were asking about, and so I got lost in the... No problem. I was Tere. focusing on something else, not really multitasking, sorry. No problem, Tede, at all. I was just saying that, um, uh, I mean, answering Neri's question, that uh, I would use Twitter with any level, provided that all the members within the community I'm, they are all into, or in the group they are into, all the members have the same level of language. And of course, it, uh, uh, it works uh, best with students whose level of language is high, Re really. This is uh, obvious, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, unless you have any further comments or any questions, I would like to share some other tools which I have chosen to show you today, to share with you, which I love really because they really complement Twitter very well. But let me see whether you have any queries before I get, uh, get into this. No, no questions, Vance? Any questions? Anything to add, please? Yeah, am I coming through? Yeah, um, you can um, you can use Twitter to create paper leads, and also there's another one that we're using. Uh, Twitter Times. The Twitter Times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, newspapers like that. Uh, if you have your students, you give your class a tag, and then you have your students um, use that tag, that hashtag for, for class-related posts, and you can put them into a list so that um, you don't have to follow them, but they don't have to follow each other, but once you've put them all into a list, that list has a URL, so the students can see what each other is doing according to the URL. Uh, if you have them... Um, Mm. Oh, if you have them doing other things online that they can tag, then uh, especially things that that they can that create um, Twitter posts. You know, you might have them uh, blog something, and uh, if they blog that they're doing something and announce in Twitter that they've done that and use the class tag, then this kind of thing gets aggregated into a newspaper, and it's kind of it, it can be very appealing. I think exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Vance. Yes, I was. I am going to speak about the Twitter Times, which is a newspaper we have shared, uh, uh, Vance, with uh, webheads as well. And I do feel that uh, yes, your suggestion is really a good one. And um, first of all, I would say that you can introduce Twitter to your class by uh, generating a tweet, a tweet greeting from your students, and uh, projecting this tweet if possible, on a screen so that students can see um, the answers or the feedback 
from this tweet in which you will say that you request an answer from your followers. So the students will be seeing the answers coming in and this is quite interesting because they might be placing these answers on a map according to where the people who answer, um, I mean the, the place to where they are from and uh, well this is going to give them the idea that they are going global and uh, uh, this idea of using English um, more meaningfully from their desks, uh, more meaningful than in the classroom limited by the four walls, uh, mainly for example in Argentina where English is not, not spoken on the streets and where uh, the, the, what teachers do in the classroom is so artificial compared as with uh, what they can see if they go global, so this would be a good idea. Uh, basically, I would say it's uh, all about conversation because, because it keeps students in contact. It emphasizes fluency in communication, mainly written fluency. It focuses on conciseness and accuracy. It's well suited to task-based language learning and it can really lead to more interactive and swift discussions. Now, some tips that I could include are answering what has your attention, as, ha as I has, have said before, better than what, what are you doing. Um, because, um, well, I wouldn't be interested in reading that someone is polishing their shoes, for example. Uh, it, uh, it's important to know that you shouldn't be talking about yourself all the time, but maybe you sh could promote somebody else's posting in a blog you could ask for opinions and allow other people to pop in. You can follow interesting people and see how they can enrich your community. And uh, any, other, any other ideas or tips that you can have on top of your heads? Vance, Teresa, Michael, Neri, nothing to share. So I would say... Yes. Well, I'll share something, Rita, because something I often do on Twitter, and it's quite random, I'll just look at the, the trending topics, oh. and it's a really great snapshot of what's going on in the world, and you can actually, in my case, I can choose what's trending in Australia, what, I can choose any country, or I can go global. So I just get a little snapshot of what is happening in the world, and it's remarkable the number of times that I pick up bits of news from Twitter and I will do that rather than go to the more traditional sources of news and it's it's I, I just do it a couple of times a day it's and it's really effective oh I love that Ooh. idea Michael beautiful idea I'll add it to my to my slides next time thank you very much and I quote you of course I cite you <laughs> And then as a personal learning tool, I love it as a personal learning tool because it's really powerful. It's an information filter that you can use to find out about what you're more, most interested in. Um, it lets me interact with experts but, who I'll never meet face to face uh, because it's an instant give and take and forces me to be a reflective learning as well. You know that we're always learning. And, uh, well, you feel that your network is the smartest and fastest because it's the, your network, is you've, you have built it up your own way. So, uh, to me, this is very important. I have learned so much with Twitter. So, what can we as educators use Twitter for? To join any conference or share discussions or follow just a stream, make it a sizzling conference by attending conferences virtually and reading what people are tweeting when they are present and we are not. And it's a perfect tool for mobile devices. Now these are some of the um, tools or applications that complement and enhance the value of Twitter. Uh, are you familiar with any of them? Anybody familiar with anybody specify? I guess Vance you know about this one. My Twitter times also. Probably about half of them. Um, specify, use, familiar with Screener, Twibes. I'm not sure if Twibes works all that well anymore. Um, uh, I checked them all before coming here. And in fact, 
they had to rule out some others which I had included. But I guess, um, if maybe I haven't checked too well, maybe it's not no longer working well. But anyhow, I checked it and it was. So maybe you should mm -hmm. just give it another try before um, using it. But anyway, it's still working. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's still working. It just doesn't. I guess with web heads, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Maybe it has uh, to be updated by a new crowds of people as the network moves in and out of itself. Oh, I see. I see. Thank you for the tip, Vance. Uh, this has to do with tribes. Then it's a group of Twitter users interested in a common topic. And uh, this is the way it looks. I took a screenshot of the page. And there are active tribes and suggestions on the topics which you can click on and find out about, I mean, different people, different groups within the topics. So this could be a good way of finding out about uh, topics you are really you want to know more about. And so you can find Twitter people interested in similar topics, but as Vance has said, maybe we should really check that before joining. Um, maybe I should check. Uh, yeah, we could be both. right. <laughs> but this used to be like this. Now maybe it's no longer doing this. Yes, thank you, Vance. I am going to check. Uh, it gathers uh, supposedly gathers like-minded members around keywords, organizes tweets, encourages community formation. If this is so, well, this is a good way of uh, finding like-minded people, and anybody can find and join any group. The one I like. One of my favorites is TweetDoc. Are you familiar with this one, anybody? TweetDoc? Nope. Nope. TweetDoc. Um, well, you can log into your Twitter account into TweetDoc, and you upload your document to script, and uh, then you need to shorten the link, of course, because the link, uh, you know, because of the limited number of uh, characters that you need to put up in Twitter. And um, this, in fact, this uh, program makes up for the uh, this limitation that Twitter has. So that the, the document provided by TweetDoc goes up. I mean, the, the URL goes up immediately, so you can expand your thoughts or ideas, or whatever, in uh, this document, which comes up comes up in Twitter. And um, very good way. Here there is a you know an example. You will see that um, there are different tweets with the addition of a document from Twitter. Then you got tagdef. You know what tagdef is? Anybody familiar? I think that you said so. You, you said you you were familiar with this, Barnes. No, haven't heard of that one. Uh, it's a tag definition. It's a way of finding out what these tags stand for. So you have trending tags, new tags, popular oh. tags. But then if you want to find out, for example, what TDF stands for, you just uh, look it up by writing it there along the, the hashtag. And it will come up with uh, uh, what it stands for. And it's uh, two other fans is one of the options. Here there is another screenshot which shows what I'm saying. For example, sorry, not sorry. It stands for sorry, but not really sorry, which is very, really silly. But anyhow, it shows that there are many, many uh, hashtags which uh, stand for trendy um, groups of people uh, interested in certain things, which might be we are not. But anyhow, we can find any possibilities and see what's, as Michael has said, what's trendy, what's going on. And uh, here comes the one where I like also, the Twitter Times. Uh, Vance, maybe you can mention our way of working with the Twitter Times. Uh, yeah, I was just looking that up because, you know, tweet, tweet, that's it, Tweeted Times. That's the one that seems to be working really well. Um, yeah, we, we did some experiments in our last uh, multiliteracies or Multimook group, call it Multimook. Uh, where we were mm, trying to see how we could aggregate content really across MOOCs. You know, uh, the, the MOOCs that have access to Stephen Downs's um, RSS Hopper, uh, he calls it 
grasshopper or GRSS hopper. Um, they they have you register um, uh, with them, and once you've registered your blog, and then any posts that you tag with the MOOC tag will be aggregated to a daily paper, and that's a, that cuts out spam. So, well, what we uh, were doing with Tweet Times was um, experimenting with a, a way we could aggregate if we uh, tag our in our group tag our posts if we could produce a newspaper and we were experimenting with Paperly at first. Paperly didn't work all that well. Uh, one reason is that uh, when you you scoop it to then um, feed something to Twitter or when you use other uh, applications to feed things to Twitter they weren't showing up these fed uh, URLs the the fed tweets weren't showing up in paperly so we were getting pretty sparse newsletters but with tweeted times uh, we were able it, it picks up all these things and it actually and not only that but paperly produces periodical papers but tweeted times seems to accumulate uh, things so that you actually get a rich paper to look at each time in fact, I could put in the text chat the one that we've made for Writing Matrix, which is a project we started some time ago. So believe it or not, I believe that Writing Matrix actually looks good in Tweeted Times, although it's a project we we did some time ago to try to aggregate student writers' content across around the world. And um, at the time, Technorati was working. So in a way, we've been looking for replacements for tech Technorati in looking for these uh, Tweeted Times and paperly and things like that but tweeted times is working pretty well and I've got the address here so I'll just stash that in the chat here so there's a newspaper you can look at and uh, I believe last time I looked it looked pretty like it's got a lot of content there yeah. so it thank works you pretty well. mm -hmm. yeah thank you very much yes you can allow your students to um, make up uh, a newspaper I mean just yeah, and you uh, can get different views as well so right, I don't know what your default view is, but explore the different views. Yes, uh, grid exactly. Grid view, column yes. view, and list view. So you know, have a look and check out what looks good. So what can you do? You can read Twitter as a daily newspaper, mainly with the people you have joined, and to use the same hashtag. And you can organize links shared on Twitter into an easy-to-read newspaper-style format. Um, so newspapers can be created for any Twitter user list or tag. And you can explore newspapers for topic tags and types. Now, this is another one. This is group tweet. Um, uh, it says that contributors tweet from either the group tweet dashboard or direct from their own um, Twitter accounts. You can see examples there. And uh, what is it that you can do? Well, you can... Um, help groups communicate privately with uh, via Twitter. You can send a private message to another user or to multiple users. Uh, enable contributors to tweet from the same account and this is important because sometimes you don't want to expose your students to um, Twitter, to uh, I mean a public um, personal uh, email address maybe or um, Yes, personal data. So maybe a group tweet coming from a group uh, will will be okay uh, because contributors' names can be hidden or displayed at the beginning or end of each tweet if you want to, and you can have multiple contributors add content to your Twitter account. But um, well, oh sorry, that uh, but keep um, well. Oh, huh. sorry, just um, <laughs> missed that. And uh, this was group tweet. And this is, well, monitor. This is a different uh, tool, uh, which I would like to share with you. Uh, it's a web-based a web tool that monitors Twitter again. Um, but it displays a number of Twitter searches in parallel to each other. And it's a great way of keeping track of a certain topic. Um, let's go there together, and you will see that, for example, since we are all headwets, uh, web heads, <laughs> you can just look at this. If I write web heads, 
at the top there and uh, I give an enter, you will see what happens. It's loading and uh, you will see that all types of contributions from web heads are up. Um, this, this is monitor.com with two T's? Yes, monitor.com with two T's. So you can see, well, different uh, postings. You can add a column if you want to have more visible at the same time. So you have all tweets containing the word web heads, which is uh, nice, really, um, because it concentrates and you know all the tweets that have been in which web heads have been mentioned or hashtagged. And um, hey. Uh, the next one is Screener, which promotes the use of Twitter uh, and um, is a web-based recorder, recording tool which allows you to do this recording without having to download anything. And um, this is the way it looks. You can um, just click the record button, capture your screen and voice and share the link and some people even call it fun, it says. There's nothing to install. You can record either from a Mac or a PC, and it plays everywhere. It's free, so really nice. Very good um, tool to bear in mind. Then specify. Um, well, specify is nice because it generates diverse search results including images and this is uh, what we really like so let's see again what happens if we type in uh, web heads okay so we know that not only will we have uh, uh, text but also images and everything all the screen will will be populated by images from web heads. Lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I wonder, Sounds you know, good. actually th this brings up a, a point which is that uh, when you're choosing a tag you want to run these searches on it before you choose it. Um, I think web heads does have, you might get something with web heads in action. If you changed web heads to web heads in action I think you might get more tweets to the point. Writing matrix, I'm just running that in monitor just now because I noticed in, if I put web heads in uh, it gets a lot of spurious results. Uh, that's because someone, that. other, people, other people are using the uh, web heads tag, you know, uh, just web heads. So web heads in action I see in that thing you just brought up I saw some pictures from uh, Fukuoka. So you actually got some hits on real instances. I ran, uh, one of the nice things about writing Matrix was that it has, I've hardly ever seen any competition on that tag. So whatever you see, if you do get hits on writing Matrix, it's almost always uh, has to do with our group of people. And it, was, it worked really well for students. So it's kind of a rare tag because, um, it, because it, it's not spammed. Uh, it's not just spam, but it's also just other people are using it. So if you if you're not careful with your tag, you'll get a confound, especially in something like specify. Um, another one that's kind of productive is EVO MLIT. That one seems pretty much to give us what we want. That's our multi literacies group that we've been using for some time. So, but you know, when you choose a tag, you need to uh, be sure that you need to run it through the search engines and make sure no one else is using it before you. You said it. Uh, is that all right, Avance? I'm just uh, trying to see what comes up using EVO multiliteracies. Is that all right? EVO MLIT. EVO MLIT. Not EVO multiliteracies, but EVO MLIT. Let me see if I can do it on. I could just put the link in there. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so that, that one's a, product, a fairly productive tag. Doesn't really have a lot of spam. Oh on it. yes, that's uh -huh. the best yes. of all. Yeah, you get you actually get pictures of people who are in our group. 
And um, yeah, so that's kind of wow. nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, Vance. And then TweetCam. Familiar with this one? You can stream live on Twitter with this one. Oh, cool. Hmm, you wow. connect your webcam, logging in with Twitter, just click the broadcast button, and you're live. Uh, you is can it limited, even. Sorry? Is it limited to 140 seconds? Uh, <laughs> 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 Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. I don't think it is. <laughs> but it says that, it, that while broadcasting, you, you can chat with your viewers via Twitter right from your broadcast page. So it's a very good, hmm. very good um, tool to bear in mind. Of course, and we could be streaming on Hangout, as we're doing now, and chatting to our... Oh, on the same page, yes. Hmm. Okay, we, we, we could set up a feed on the, on the webheadsinaction.org slash live that would stream chats on a, on a tag we had selected and then we could be communicating with each other oh, yeah. uh, on the side and back channel that way as well. Yeah, yeah. Not giving a presentation at the same time once, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean... You, <laughs> well, you, you, can... you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can present and just, uh, you know, uh, play with other tools as you present, but I can't do that. <laughs> well, and, I don't um, know. Busy. Yeah, you can do it. You can. You are such a good uh, multitasker. And uh, well, what can we say about Twitcam? That you can uh, well post your video description and link to Twitter for all your followers to see. You can chat with your viewers and you archive your video and display it on the same page. So it's a good one. Now the story so far, uh, but it's a special site. Um, acquainted with it? The story writing nope. project based on Twitter messages. I love this one, which you can use with your students. Mm -hmm. And um, you can send the tweet and uh, to start a new entry, a new topic, or you can vote, or you can well, you know, go on participating in different stories which are available daily, and. Uh, you can even, you, you, there is a vote and you need to make at the end of the day so that um, the, 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 the entry which gets the most votes becomes part of the story. So very nice to allow your students to participate actively in the making of a story. And of course, it is a curation tool. As a curation tool, it works great because it provides the way of uh, you know getting information, organizing, uh, interpreting, summarizing, or and uh, as a network you can build your own community, and you can be the curator of your own network by uh, allowing others to participate and you know um, disseminate resources and put in personal perspective, and you can do everything all this in real time. Uh, which allows you to be the bridge for others to participate at an event sometimes where you are present but your network is not. Um, to maximize the impact of your tweets uh, maybe we should bear in mind that it's important to include a link to leave some extra space for those who want to retweet our message and uh, add something else. Uh, we need to remember that we should be brief and succinct, but not like this. This would be, sorry once, an example of what people may put up in Facebook. <laughs> Don't forget to check out our event, uh, sorry, uh, to, to check out our uh. event tonight at our office. It makes it, I mean, it's difficult for me to read it. At our office, it's going to be great. So this is a kind of uh, posting that you will come across in... Facebook maybe, but not in Twitter. And uh, this is what I meant when I said that, uh, well, it, it's, mm, in Facebook you may come across um, distorted portions of language, but not in Twitter. You can open up a conversation, um, and this would be interesting to do so that you start the ball, you get the ball um, rolling. And using the hashtag is very important also to keep your community going. 
And you should be giving credit where credit is due when you quote or cite someone's work. And finally, uh, just to show my appreciation, <laughs> I, I have included this uh, slide which shows my love for Twitter but not my love for Facebook. So uh, thank you very much everybody for being here and I would like <laughs> anybody, I mean, <laughs> please uh, do let me know if you have any queries, anything that I could well explain further or if you just want to add something. You are very welcome. Uh, Rita, can you please pay attention to what Neri uh, wrote? That sure. she said, I would have thought it's the other way around. He, he. Uh, I think that's regarding the text message, the, the SMS type text uh, that you mentioned that would never happen in Twitter but would happen in Facebook. Uh -huh. Right, the abbreviation of words. Okay, so if you can take a look and say something about that. Uh, let me see. Well, has she written anything else apart I, from that? I mean, it's just that. No, it's just that I would have thought it's the other way around, and then the abbreviation of words. She just clarified the oh, idea. Okay. Well, I would like because maybe I'm too much a fan of uh, Twitter, and I would like you mm -hmm. to just uh, say whether you have come across. Uh, distortions of the language uh, of this size in Twitter, I haven't myself. Um, I don't know whether Michael or Clarita would be a good, uh, well, uh, she might come up with the good examples or just maybe back my saying or not because she's a Twitter fan or maybe she's in Twitter a lot. Vance, if you've been in Facebook and in Twitter, maybe you can back me up or just say maybe I'm wrong. But according to my experience, this is what I've seen. Sorry if uh, I, I'm, I mean, I haven't um, been accurate from your point of view, Neri, but I would like you to just uh, let me know what else you feel about this. Um, maybe in your community or in your group of people, this, is, um, this doesn't happen in Facebook. Just let me know if you can, please. I think you need to be careful of saying stuff like that, Rita, because my experience in Facebook is that people tend to use whole sentences. They write kind of proper English. And I, I think I agree with Neri. They're more likely to abbreviate to fit into the 140 characters space. And I do it in Twitter because I have to, because I, I run out of letters. So I think it probably happens in both spaces but my experience in Facebook is that people don't mangle the language. I have other objections about Facebook but okay. not that one. Okay, all right, all right, thank you very much Michael. Yes, maybe I, I'm biased, maybe, and uh, so maybe for next presentation when I'm, I'm talking about Twitter I won't include this appreciation. <laughs> thank you anyway. Uh, anything else that you would like to add? Nobody? Nobody? Uh, Rita, I'd just like to thank you for the very nice presentation and for opening up my eyes, I think other people's eyes too, to some of these uh, tools that are linked to Twitter and I will take a look at them as soon as I have some uh, time because they sound, they sound great. Oh, thank you very much, Teresa, and thank you very much, Vance and Michael, Neri, Clarita, for being here. Um, it's been quite an experience to share uh, this uh, session with you all. And, uh, well, um, you've got, you all know me, except from Neri. I'm so sorry that she can't uh, uh, speak so that we can hear her voice and, uh, you know, learn from her as well. And, uh, well, uh, Nelly is the only one who might not be acquainted with my email address. I will be able, I will write it on the chat box so that, Nelly, if you want to write to me, you are very welcome. It might be nice to get a list of your links. Uh, you could email them to me if you want, and I, I'll put it in the archives for the event. I will. So, Archiving, well, right now it's archived. When we leave here and this becomes a recording on YouTube, then you can go to uh, Webheads in Action 
org slash live and you'll be able to play the recording. Uh, from that I can render an mp3 and uh, so I'll try to podcast that though I'm not very assiduous with podcasting at the moment because um, Posturus is shutting down so I'm looking for places to put the <laughs> stuff but anyway um, anyhow uh, I am collecting uh, things in the Dropbox so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll make links to it I'm just not sure what, where it will end up but anyway um, so all this will be podcast. We'll get back on the podcast track eventually uh, as we get time. And um, it's very nice of you to give this very informative presentation. Presentations are always informative, Rita. Yes. Thank you very much once again, Michael and uh, Clary and Eddie and Teresa. Um, thank you very much for being here and uh, helping me um, well share this presentation with you all. I'm going to end the broadcast and uh, say bye to everybody. Till next time. Bye-bye. Okay.